Welcome to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church. The scripture passage we will be reflecting upon today is Ephesians chapter 4. In this passage, we'll hear about all the ways that we are called to reflect God's love in our lives. We're called to forgive, to put away bitterness and anger, to never knock others down, but instead to build each other up. The scripture passage reminds us of how we often fall short of who God creates us to be. So let's begin worship with confession and then hear the good news that God forgives us all of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome again to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Pete. Our preacher today is Deacon Tracy. It's always wonderful to worship with you online. It's also wonderful to worship with you in person. If you are a member of our Savior's or live close to the church, please know that we now have in-person worship services on Sundays at 10 a.m. More and more people are checking out these worship services each weekend. We do take every precaution that we can to keep each other safe, we wear masks, we refrain from singing, we practice physical distancing. But even with all of these precautions in place, our in-person worship services are beautiful and uplifting. So I hope to see you online, and I hope to see you in person again one of these days. As we prepare now to hear our Bible reading, there's one part of the Bible reading that I want you to listen for. It's a Bible verse that's been put to song. The camp song goes like this. Be kind one and to another. 
tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Do, do, doodly do. Ephesians 4.32. You'll hear all of those words except for the do, do, doodly do part. Words to sing. Words to live by. Word of God. Welcome again to worship. A reading from Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. During the summer of 2015, Disney Pixar released an animated feature called Inside Out. This movie takes place inside the mind of a young girl named Riley and is centered around five personified emotions that try to lead her through life's various actions and interactions. These five core emotions, joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger, are with Riley from birth. They help her in forming relationships and memories with her family, friends, hockey teammates, as well as with adjusting to a new environment when her family moves from Minnesota to San Francisco. Joy, the leader of the group, is a peppy blue-haired sprite who makes sure that Riley smiles, laughs, has fun, and enjoys all the good things in life. Sadness is completely blue and mopes around the headquarters. While sadness is useful when Riley gets hurt, is sick, or feels down, Joy tries her hardest not to have sadness interfere with Riley's day-to-day -day life. Throughout the movie, Joy attempts to keep sadness contained in a variety of ways, from giving her mundane tasks to drawing a circle for her to sit and stay in. Meanwhile, purple-hued fear's efforts are focused on making sure that Riley is safe while she's walking or having fun, and he's really good at keeping Riley away from spiders. Disgust's job is exactly as it sounds. She guides Riley away from all things in life that might be deemed gross, especially broccoli. And then there's anger. Red-faced, stubborn anger, who cares very deeply about life being fair, and who isn't afraid to blow his top from time to time. Even though Riley's emotions are in animated form, Every single one of us can relate to these characters because we have all felt joy, sadness, fear, disgust, or anger at some point in our lives. In fact, I am willing to bet that we might go through each one of these feelings in the span of a week or even a single day. Of the five, the one emotion that can be the most intense and forceful is anger. Anger is a strong emotion, and in most of us, 
when anger, anger bubbles to the surface, there can be no holding back. Toddlers have been known to throw themselves into fits of anger over a lost toy or the simple word no. We can become mad at our siblings, our spouses, children, family members, or friends over the most trivial things. A joke taken out of context, poor manners, not doing chores, or about serious matters like lying. Each one of us also has a trigger, a hot button issue, like injustice or bullying that gets us so fired up that all we see is the color red. Oftentimes, we are so angry during a situation that we forget to think about what our recipient is feeling. Sometimes they saw your anger coming. They knew that the storm clouds were brewing. But there are other times when our anger blindsides those that we cherish and love or even bewilders a stranger. The thing is, every one of us knows what both sides feel like. We've been the deliverer of an infuriated argument and the recipient of an angry outburst. And both reactions are inherently and inexplicably human. In the fourth chapter of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul is dealing with some conflict that is built up within the church at Ephesus. From the tone of the text, we can assume that the conflict occurred in the past and that the church members cannot seem to let their anger go. Feelings are still hurt, friendships have been lost, and the initial argument is still smoldering. Although the exact reason for the conflict at Ephesus is lost to time, what we do know from the text is that Paul has arrived to help heal the wounds and allow the congregation to move on. Paul begins by acknowledging their anger, saying in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sin, the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Within this one sentence, Paul is telling the congregation at Ephesus and us that it is okay to get angry. Anger is an acceptable emotion, and we have every right to argue with great enthusiasm or be passionate about a topic. However, when our anger boils over into hurtful words or actions, that is when we have crossed the line. Paul is quick to point out that an argument should be about resolving an issue, not tearing someone down. In Ephesians 4, verse 29, Paul writes, Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. In other words, discuss the issue at hand, forgive, and move forward. While one will never know what got the church at Ephesus fighting in the first place, Paul is clear that their actions are destructive and need to stop. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. From the outside looking in, it's hard to imagine a congregation fighting with such intensity that they would lie, slander, and hurt one another. Someone from a warm, welcoming, and peaceful congregation might wonder how fellow Christians could possibly do such a thing. And yet, anger happens within congregations, in marriages and friendships, between neighbors and fellow Christians. There is no way to stop an emotion like anger. It needs to happen to lead a healthy life. But what can be changed are two things the way in which we anger or respond to anger, 
and what happens in the aftermath. Too many times, issues or situations go unresolved because one or both parties don't want to listen and talk to clear the air after a disagreement. Paul encouraged the people of the church at Ephesus to live in love as Christ loved us. So what do Paul's words mean for us as we listen with 21st century ears? The answer is simple. Keep following Jesus's lead. Let's take a moment to think about Jesus's life and ministry. Now, Jesus paid attention and took time to listen and communicate. He loved without a fault those who were his friends, those who were strangers, even people who had differing viewpoints than he did. Did Jesus get angry? Absolutely he did. A certain story comes to mind when Jesus was so mad at the merchants in the temple that he flipped tables. But no matter what, Jesus forgave. In Jesus' eyes, no action was completely unforgivable, even Judas' betrayal. Jesus took time to stop, listen, communicate, and most of all, forgive. Even today, we need to do the same. Sometimes all we have to do is stop, listen, communicate, and forgive. Now, I fully acknowledge that this is not easy. Lord knows I need help with the stopping, the listening, the communicating, and definitely the forgiving parts myself. But when we do so, an understanding can be reached within an argument, and a way forward can be forged together. During the movie Inside Out, each of Riley's five core emotions, joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger. Realize that as Riley grows and matures, each of them are needed in equally important ways. Riley's life can't be completely dominated by one emotion, such as joy or sadness. She must be able to experience each emotion in its own way, and from those feelings, her memories will continue to flourish. Now, interestingly enough, Riley's core emotions parallel to our own reactions when we think about Jesus' ultimate sacrifice for us. We feel angry that Judas could have betrayed his loyal friend. We are disgusted at the way the Romans treat Jesus, and we feel the fear that the disciples experienced. It is with sadness that we recall Jesus' death on the cross and then there is joy, abundant joy, when we learn that Christ is risen and our sins are forgiven. As we navigate each day and those core emotions come together, let us never forget that no matter what, we are beloved and forgiven children of God. May we always feel Christ's love from the inside out. Amen.
and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, for the world, and for all of God's creation. We pray for the Church of Christ in all of its diverse forms. We pray for mission developers, new mission starts, for church camps, seminaries, and campus ministries. We pray for our own congregation as we prepare to begin Vacation Bible School this week. Help us, O oh God, as we continue to share the good news of your love with all people in this ever-changing world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and we pray for all who lack clean water. Thank you, God, for all who are stri striving to care for your creation in simple ways like recycling, and in complex ways like digging water wells. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are called to positions of authority in our legal system, for judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice, for corrections officers and prison chaplains that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. We pray for the day when justice will roll down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, for refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, and for all who are sick. We pray for those who are hospitalized, homebound, for all medical personnel working to fight the Delta variant, and for all who are in need in any way, we pray silently or aloud at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hold us together, Lord, in these days when we are still separated from loved ones, either physically or behind masks. Hold us together in this world divided by politics and differing opinions. Remind us always to listen to one another, to forgive one another, and to work together in building each other up and building up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We lift these and all of our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. shall be 